Hey, this is Marius of Roosevelt. Uh, we're here in my studio in Cologne, and I want to show you a track from my debut album called Wait Up. And we're going to look into the project in Logic and going to run through um, all the different instruments I used. <laughs> Um, all right, I think that track started with a drum recording. I mean, the, the project name was even Drum Test because I had some like a bunch of new microphones and um, I just wanted to try them out. So there's like a proper drum recording here. Um, pretty basic, a lot of logic um, processing. Nothing too fancy. Um, I recorded the kick, but then uh, switched over to a kick sample. So I just muted the kick um, microphone. Yeah, it's something I do quite a lot. Um, nice thing is that you still have like a little of little bit of snare button on the kick. Which blends in with the with the sample. Um, yeah, and, and the kick is something. I mean, I could have used this. I think the recording is quite good actually. Um, but it's something when I like. Um, if you feel safe with a certain kick sample, it's quite hard to switch to a different one. So I just this is a, like just a kick sample that I lay at in a different track, and I, I don't even know where I did it, but. Um, just a kick sample I use on a lot of tracks um, on the whole album. Yeah, so that's the drum recording. Um, the track itself, like like I said, quite basic processing. Um, the thing that I've realized um, when I looked into the project now, I didn't even use um, gates on the toms, um, which I normally do, but um, they didn't really like it didn't really um, do anything to the main sound and sometimes it's even nice when you pan the toms um, to have like a little bit more of a stereo image through the, the tom mics so um, this is just the toms running through the whole track there's some automation just to make them louder at certain points but they yeah keep running through the track um, so that's the drums. What I like to do with the drums is have like little um, little buses just to add kind of a uh, little bit of room, a little bit of compression. Um, so there's this um, little room, like more of a booth. I use the space designer with the drum booth for um, setting, just to give it like a little bit more. Um, of a room sound because my drum booth is just really, um, really small and doesn't have any room at all. Um, so there's this, and then there's um, on the whole group there's a trash channel, just like this, just to give it a bit more dirt and. Um, um, yeah, just not as clean straight from the mics. So this blends in with the whole with the whole group. And it really makes a difference. Although it's like it's really subtle, but it really makes a difference in the whole mix. Yeah. Um that's pretty much it. There's one other room sound with the Valhalla um, vintage world that I really like. Um, and I use those channels more as a like parallel compression. Um, so there's I choose which channels go in there. And this is just um, 
Yeah, this is just the overheads going in there. So um, I use them more as a parallel compression and over compress them really hard and then and then see which um, yeah which channels I want to put in there. So there's a compressor compressing it really hard and then even a clip distortion. Yeah. Um, and then cutting off the, the bass so it just affects the a certain um, frequency range. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and the idea was to have like a like a seventies disco sound. Um, I used a, a Pearl um, vintage kit from sixty nine for this, um, which has like naturally, which doesn't ring really and has quite a dead, um, dead sound. Um, yeah, the thing I like, or the thing, like the way I see it is, um, what I really like is to, to, to give an acoustic drum kit, like an electronic feel. And um, yeah, the way to do it is just have it really dry and dead. Um, this is the snare, like it is. Um, yeah. Just the sound I really like, and it was really, really fitting on that on that track. All right, um, that's the drums. All right, moving forward to the percussion stuff. Um, on this track, actually, there's not much real percussion going on. Normally, I'd like to record um, some tambourines and some uh, bongos and some claps, just to bring in more dynamic, but as the, the drums already have a lot of dynamic, um, it's almost like the opposite was the case, that I wanted the, the, f the feeling more to be like in a 4-4 like um, uh, element and to, to have the claps really on the, on the bar. Um, so for the tambourine I used like a sample loop that I just have on my hard drive. Like on lots of the samples, I don't really know anymore where they come from because in other projects, I bounce them off when I lay at them and when I quantize them or stuff. So this is just a tambourine I use on a lot of things that blends in with the drums quite nice. Um, no processing really on that. Um, the claps, what I like to do on the claps is put like a sample delay on them just to make them, to give them off a stereo image. Um, you will see that a lot on the on the synthesizers as well. Um, it's just something I I like to do to give them like a simple stereo effect. Um, I don't really like the the um, all those like spread plugins um, because um, they like first of all, if you don't use them right, you get a lot of phasing issues. And um, I just like to keep the extreme right and left channel like for the overheads and for the extreme things that I want to put there. So with the sample delay, you just have, have a delay on one channel and it's something I use a lot just to give mono signals like more depth and more like a broader sound. Um, yeah. Then we have With um, like a bongo loop coming in for the last. Um, oh, this channel is just to make the claps louder. Just a quite lazy thing to do it. Just put on another channel and put it over it. Um, yeah, and then we have this bongo loop coming in from the la for the last um, in the middle eight and for the last chorus um, with those shakers. Again, for the bongo loop, I don't really know which uh, sample library it was. DHS, I think, is Disco House samples. Probably from Loopmaster, I'm not sure. Um, and the shakers are just Logic internal shakers, um, which I really like. Like, I, I layer them up quite a lot, so they have, like, a fuller, fuller sound. Um, 
And just something I like to do to, to bring some extra elements in the last part of the track. There's also some added um, synthesizers right here that just appear in the last um, in the last uh, chorus. So this is just added at the end. Yeah, so that's the that's the percussion track. Um, let's move on to the bass. Um, the bass is played with a uh, Höfner um, short scale bass. Um, I think from the 60s even, 69 as well. Um, and I bounced them on those tracks, but there's one track where you can see actually my channel strip, which is the Logic Bass Amp, and quite a basic compression. This one is quite um, distorted. This is just happening in the middle eight. Yeah, the others are not that distorted. But the thing with the short scale bass is that you um, get a quite punchy sound that you don't really have to compress that hard anymore and that's just something I really like. I like to keep the the source of the audio quite close to, to what I have in mind um, so I don't have to like put a crazy amount of, of plugins on the on the channel. Um, yeah just a bit of compression from the logic compressor With the distortion, it's always um, funny how you don't really realize in the full mix um, how much is actually how much uh, how much it's actually distorted. Um, but it just makes a difference because you can hear the bass better. So I think like I am always um, I always put like more drive on the bass um, just to make sure that it's um, noticeable in the in the mix in the end. Okay, that's the bass. All right, uh, moving on to the guitars. Um, there's quite a lot of uh, different takes. Um, there's um, like a left and right double guitar that supports the, the bass line and plays like unisono with the, with the bass. So um, the channel strip is paddleboard on an amp in Logic. Um, so I use sometimes I use the AC30 in the drum booth to record, but like mostly, especially if it's if it starts with a rough idea, um, I just use the paddleboard on the amp. Uh, I'm so used to them that like I started. Producing Garage Band and then like with Logic 8, and I always like used Logic compressors and Logic amp simulators. Um, so that's just my go-to uh, plugins. Um, this one is on the left, and then there's a Vox emulation on the right. Yeah, and they're both like not really. Uh, bassy because they're quite functional. I mean, I, I knew they just they're just there to support the bass line, S but in, in total they sound like quite full and yeah. Then there's these delay breaks. Um, 
And I use the pedal board as well for that. So there's this one and the like that note thing and they're controlled with um, automations. Just to make the break a bit fuller and give it like a rhythmic rhythmic element. <laughs> Then in the verse, there's. Um, I just wanted to make it a bit more, um, just a bit more, uh, give it a bit more depth, um, because it was quite. Um, it sounded quite obvious and quite clean, um, so I added this like twang. That's wh what I call it. Um, track, which is just me playing the chord and um, turning the the neck. Um, so you have this signal just as a kind of guitar overdub. But in the end it gives it a lot of character and um, it's kind of the same thing than detuning a, a synth, um, which, al which also gives it a lot of character and like a personal touch. Um, so yeah, in the mix it really makes sense. So this is the verse, um, and then in the chorus, that's just I think the same, um, the same amps on left and right with chords. delay on the one of them. On that one. Um, then again there's an overlay overlaying track right here as an overdub. So I listen a lot to, to like tracks I recorded already and then I realize there's just a harmony missing or like a certain sound is missing. That's the same thing that happens with the chords that I speak about later here. Um, but instead of like changing the chord and re-record the um, track, um, I just like to um, record like an overdub with with the information that, that is missing in my, in my ear. Um, so in that case it was just a different harmony on the last chord. So there's just this happening also. Like barely noticeable, but for me it was important to change the, the chord in that direction. There's also this intro guitar. There's an intro on the track which is on the album, the, the first track um, and the intro going for almost two minutes and it's also the, the live intro. Um, and it was in the same session, so it was all for Wait Up at first and then it made sense to cut it in two different tracks on the album. Um, it's this synthesizer, the MS-20. Um, and I played this guitar on top of it, which is just really kind of crowd rock, delayed, um, kind of a jammy guitar. Just to give it a bit more space and um, yeah. It's a lot of tape delay from Logic. Um, vintage verb again. Sample delay again. I like to have this quite extreme from time to time. Um, if it's not a rhythmic element that really has to, to hit at a certain time and it's really like loose, like in that case, I like to just crank it up like that so it sounds almost like you have two different 
two different guitars playing. Um, so the 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 kind of chorus, phaser, all that stuff also comes from the pedal board. So that's like phase two, which I really like. Just to give it a bit more, um, just to just to move it around a bit to have it um, something I do on synth also a lot. Um, oh, that was off. There you go. Um, yeah, just to move it around a bit in the stereo image to give it a bit more depth. Um, I use a lot of like slow and uh, slow choruses and slow phases. Yeah. Um, if we go on with the synths, um, and that's the. MS20 plug, uh, MS20 recording, MS20 mini. Um, I just like the. It's not really heavy here, um, but I just like to record the MS20 mini. I have it here. I, I got the keys, put down the, put away the keys bec uh, because I had it in the live setup um, a few times. Um, and the nice thing now is that it fits on the, on the desk. Um, so I just use it with MIDI in. Um, but it really has a strong, like, pure square wave. Um, and um, the thing I like to do is, in, like in this case, to record like a MIDI track. And then play around with like a filter on top. But in this case, it's pretty much open the whole time. Um, if I do stuff, ah, it's, it goes down at the end. Um, I use the one knob filter just to have like a simple filter that doesn't really sound like like that doesn't really color it just to have like a the most subtle filter going on um, the thing with the ms20 mini is if you put the if you put the cutoff down um, there's like a lot of noise happening and if you then compress it you sometimes really can hear the noise so I like to record it really open um, and then do the filters afterwards um, yeah, but that's that kind of stuff is mostly recorded with with the MS20 Mini. Um, and yeah, here again, there's this extreme sample delay. Um, there's this delay happening from the J37 the waves. Um, and the effect is kind of that it starts with the delay being too fast for the rhythm, then the arpeggiator goes faster, and then the delay is right on track, and then the like right in the in the right tempo, and then the delay and then the arpeggiator goes faster and the delay is too too slow, so it kind of plays with the delay time, which stays at the same um, yeah the same speed. Um, so the, the arpeggiator in the intro, um, this one, um, like I normally use Logic only, but for stuff like this I use Live to, to change the tempo, like without breaks. So I had, a, um, I had the, the, the MIDI written for that arpeggiator and then um, played with the time in Ableton, um, and that's how I did it faster. Um, and then recorded it straight into Logic. Um, yeah, and there's a there's a harmony going on on here with like a seventh um, seventh half note distance, um, which and then if you double that, that brings that kind of like trippy trippy effect. Right, and there's the same um, synth in the outro of the track happening right here. Um, where I used like the logic fade out um, that actually affects the pitch, which you can choose over here. Which I realized just like when I did the track, I think. And you can choose 
fade out and I don't know the English word for that, but yeah, slowing it down. Um, which is always like a nice effect at the end. Um, and then the intro, there's this chords. I think it must be the Uno, you know, where I just played with the um, with the LFO um, intensity on the on the modulation of the filter. So um, uh, actually played with the speed of the LFO, um, just to to make the intro a bit more exciting and bring in like a constant layer again with like really extreme simple delay because it's just it's not nothing rhythmical and just spreads it out a bit um, all right so for the rest of the synths i used a lot of um the juno the juno 60 is probably like one of the synthesizers that defined um my sound like it was the first one I had like a MIDI keyboard and then the Uno um, as like the first synthesizer um, I guess five years ago so it really defined um, my style um, synthesizer wise um, and I think I started with uh, this track this like these chords were the first which are quite like percussive, like they have quite a fast attack. And then I added a few different layers. Just to make it a bit more weird and play like with the detuned function, um, like with the uh, modulation on the Uno. Um, what I like to do when I have the the chords layered like this is like an amp, um, like an amp bus. So they all go in this bus with like a Marshall emulation from the from the um, amp simulator, which just makes them a bit more um, noisy and gritty. Um, that's without that's with yeah and again those layered um, tracks I, I do them for the sounds um, mostly, but sometimes I also miss like a certain harmony. So, so there's this um, added harmony. Then in the um, it's also like I did the same thing for the. Um, no, sorry. Um, I did these kind of effect chords of X um, as like the the one in every beat in the in the verse or like in the main part. Um, put a lot of tape delay on them. And pan them around a bit, but with an with an automation. Yeah, and I like to like start these before the one, so they kind of kind of sweep into the into the uh, one of the beat. All right, other synths in the in the chorus. The I think it's the kind of the same um, sound as for this one, um, but it's just a bit more open and with a bit more delay. Oh, there's no delay on it. Sometimes I record them with like an RD20 um, straight. Um, like normally I have the Uno 
with an RE20 like pedal on it. So sometimes there's like a slight delay on the track already. That's probably the case here. So this is in the um, chorus and there's these slides. Probably influenced by like talking heads. Um, this must be the place, this like sliding um, Yeah, just the sliding synth going from like left to right uh, with an automation again over here. Um, and then there's one in the outro. Uh, yeah, with an automation on the on the EQ, so it just slowly goes away. Um, the slides are probably done with the um, with the G with the Uno. I remember um, doing the doing them like by hand, and it's probably the Uno, um, and I just played a note, put it up and down. Um, yeah, and the sound only really works with like a lot of delay, um, delay and reverb on it. But yeah, in the, in the whole mix, it's r this sound is just really important, and um, it, the, the aim was to make it sound a bit like a flute, almost, like not really like a synthesizer. Or someone told me he, he thought it was a guitar uh, feedbacking, so it's not really like a full synth sound, but more like a... Um, more like a like unique element that should stand out in the mix. <laughs> And it, like from the songwriting, it's it's always in the breaks of the vocal, so it's almost like a call and response um, happening with the vocal. So that's pretty much all the synthesizer stuff that's happening. Um, there's just some effects um, that I like to use um, just to give the chorus like a bigger feel when it when it happens, like when it goes into the chorus. Um, I use these like synth noise rise and uh, the sweep which on its own like um, sounds quite modern and a bit over the top but like in the combination with the with the other synths it really makes sense Yeah, I think if you if you would sidechain that noise effect, then it would like get really modern and a bit over the top. Um, but if you keep it if you keep it at the same level um, and mix it not too extreme, um, like treble wise, um, then it's fine. Like for me, it's really fitting to to have that like seventies um, disco effect when the chorus comes in. Uh, yeah, and then the only software synthesizers I used on that one is um, the Unotal plugin, um, which comes in at the end, just as a like, just as a layer um, happening on top on the other chord, of, uh, on top of the other chords, um, with like quite a hard side chain. Um, Sidechain coming from the kick drum, and for like that kind of overdub um, synthesizers, I, I use a lot of um, software synthesizers when it's not really about the character of the track, but more about like a functional, um, a functional thing that needs to happen where you just know 
I just want to have this kind of frequency in the end um, a bit more, a bit higher, and then I think it's enough to use like software synthesizers. Um, yeah, so for that one, um, there's a lot of chorus from the coming from the plugin. Like normally, I don't really like the, especially the 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 on software since I don't really like the built-in effects. Um, but the on this plugin, the the chorus is just really great, and it sounds really authentic to the to the real thing, and really makes a difference. So that's with the chorus, and that's without. It's almost like without the chorus, you you um, you realize it's a software synth, and the the chorus gives it like the character that it needs. Um, yeah, but in the mix it's quite low anyway. And yeah, like I said, the, it's really enough to use the, the plugin for this one. And for the sweep I used the, the retro synth of the new um, Logic, which I really like. And on other tracks I use it like way more. And here it's just to have like a simple sweep effect in this little break after the middle eights. Yeah, and the only other thing uh, of the synthesizers that I forgot is this little break here um, with the delay on it. Um, so it's an automated um, blue echo of the pedal board. Yeah, just the time going quicker and quicker to give it like a delay effect in the break. Weird and so on. Yeah, for these kind of things, I just like to give it another track. Um, so this one is like clean and doesn't have any automation on it. And then here, all the things are happening. Maybe that's why there's so many tracks in the end, because I just like to double them and have like, like a clean start. Um, yeah, and then do the aut automation on the, on the new track. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much it from the synthesizers. On this track, the, the synths are quite basic and um, just give like a mellow, mellow chords and the most action happens on the bass line and the guitars. Um, yeah, so there's no crazy like um, arpeggiators on this, but more like, more like chords that, that should support the, the mood of the track. Okay, uh, moving on to the vocals. Um, it's a pretty crazy um, channel strip I use for vocals. Um, because there's so much processing that I like to put on them. There's a lot of delay going into compressors. Um, and in this track, not even much reverb. But for example, here the reverb goes before all the compressors with like, uh, like not, a lot of, not a lot of in the, uh, percentage in the mix. But um, it's just a certain sound that I like, the compressors like to, to put delay and reverb into the compressor to give it like this haunting feel that the vocals have. Turn back time. Take me back to the dawn. This doubler makes it like gives it like a stereo image. Um, it's ready in the morning. If only I could turn back time. Yeah, so if I if I would mix a track where I get the stems, I mix a lot of live sessions that we play and get the multi-track. Uh, I wouldn't like build it that way, but um, in the studio a lot of times I sing into a compressor just to make it more easy to, to sing and to make it feel good. And then afterwards I put on another compressor and I just leave the channel strip like it is. So there's Take me back to the compressor not doing much here and then one that's a bit more heavy here. 
Um, and this all goes in the J37. Should I like to... First of all, there's a delay happening here, slap delay. And also like to give it some saturation. Take me back to the dawn and we're slipping away. Yeah, so what I like to do with vocals is like give it a three dimensional um, feeling. I record them mostly with a SM7, so nothing, nothing fancy. Um, uh, so the 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 um, the source of the audio doesn't really sound exciting, and then I just like to extend it and give it like a three D feeling, especially with the reverb and the uh, she the was double. Ready in the morning. If only I could turn back time. Um, and then a bit similar to the guitar and um, synthesizer breaks that we saw earlier, there's like uh, this delay track, which are like delay drones, uh, rhythmical delay drones that like, go over the break. I think here it's just the um, J37. And now not on slap, but on feedback. Um, yeah, it's just something I like to do to to um, to have a bit more character during those vocal breaks, especially when the vocal line is um, has these breaks and is not um, running for for the whole time. We're slipping away Lay me down on your loving If only I could tell the Yeah, and the, the initial vocal recording is something I do in a different project um, just to give me some space in the other project um, and not to do it like all in the same thing and that's why it's like um, one take here and not no like crazy cuts um, because I like do it's quite a lot of cuts and uh, different takes in the in the recordings. Um, yeah, the uh, chorus vocal pretty much the same channel strip. Um, and reach for some way and reach for the sun You know I want you to come Put the reverb in the amp because I just wanted to have a different effect um, Just wanted to... Um, didn't want the reverb to go on the compressor But just wanted a reverb that like opens it up in the end Kind of a, the opposite effect um, So wait up yeah, but and that's what's happening here. I think the doubling effect is even a bit louder here. Um, you know I want and there's a delay thing happening on the on, on wait up on the words wait up. So wait up, wait up and reach for the sun. With a logic you know tape delay. I want you to come. Just wait up, wait up and don't make a sound. Yeah, it's just something. I do a lot on, especially when the when the track is called uh, like a word in the chorus, um, just to emphasize the 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 words and give it a bit more of a catchy feeling. So wait up, wait up, and reach for the sun. Um, then there's four different rec recordings of backing vocals. Um, I think I recorded them even in this project. Um, and there's not much processing really on them. Um, and sound like these. Wait up, reach for the sun. Bit more reverb and. You know I want it to come. Just wait up. Delay then on the, on the other tracks. Wait up, reach for the sun. Yeah, I really like the, the color option in the vintage verb. Um, normally use the 70s, um, and on these I would just wanted to have a bit more high-end, a bit more travel. Um, 
which are cut away in the 70s option. So, yeah, use the 80s option for this one. When I reach for the sun, you know I want you to come. Just wait out and don't make a sound. All right, in the um, middle eight, kind of the same channel strip, but two different uh, recordings. Can we fall into the sky again? I saw this as the um, like main vocal. Uh, I just don't want you to go. go. And then this as the effects layer. Like it's, I don't really think about like. Um, how I how I want to use delays and reverbs, but sometimes I just end up with like one vocal take, um, and instead of putting delay like a lot of delay on it, I just use a different different layer. It's always like the same approach I have sometimes with drums. If I if I want to over compress, um, as, uh, like have an over compressed layer. It's always better to do it with another mic, just to, to like I have ribbon mics in the room here to record the drums over there, and then I put like heavy compression on these mics, um, just to separate it from the initial sound. And that's kind of the same approach here. Um, have the like over compressed and delayed um, vocal on a different track and see it as an as an effects effect track, which comes from a different source. Why can't we fall into the sky again? I just don't want you to go. Why can't you fall into my eyes again? Yeah, again, tape delay. I think it works really well for these. Like, um, I use a lot of the the sound toys. Um, Echo Boy, if you can hear the delay like really loud in the mix, um, the the emulations of like um, old tape machines are really good on that one. But if you want just like a simple delay going on, uh, especially when you have so many tracks with with delays going in the in the certain breaks, um, the tape delay is really enough and sounds really good to me. Yeah, I mean the the way I work is like a lot of a lot of the time I just have a loop and um, that's also with the bass line that happened. Um, like I have a loop and then I realize. Um, because, yeah, then I realized in the songwriting um, there needs to be d different notes or like a change and that's why, just to go back to the bass, there's just a, a different track for just a different note. So, because I realized this note has to be like, um, has to sustain longer. And um, that's why like some of these Tracks um, are in the project just to uh, where is it again uh, over here? Just because I started um, uh, writing the track in the project, then mixed it a bit, and then I realized the songwriting goes in a different direction. And then just to change it, you sometimes just need some some extra extra steps. And um, it's funny how it all goes by. Probably just change some words here or the melody, um, so that's why these. It's funny. Go spy. Never. Yeah, so that's why I sometimes need like extra, extra tracks to do these kind of things. Thanks for watching me um, running through my Logic project. Um, that has been part of my debut album, and I hope you listen to the whole thing. Thank you.